we uh, let's get started today. Um, thank you everyone so much for uh, attending. We'll, we are recording this event so that we um, can post it to our YouTube channel later and um, allow all the people who weren't able to attend today to um, see what's going on with short routes and the East Coast Greenway. Um, so um, we're here today to talk about discovering short routes uh, with Adventure Cycling and the East Coast Greenway Alliance. Um, with us today, we have um, Jen Hamelman, Allison Burson, and Daniel Pashal. I'm sorry, Daniel, how do you pronounce your last name? No worries, uh, Pascal. Pascal, thank you. Um, and uh, so I'm just gonna introduce everybody. Um, before I do that, let me mention, we'll be taking questions um, and doing a Q&A at the end. If you have questions that come up for you during this presentation, just throw them in the chat I'll keep track of them and then I'll initiate the, the Q&A at the very end. Um, I'm Jessica Zephyrs. I work for Adventure Cycling Association in our marketing department. I've been with the organization for almost six years now and um, I'm extremely excited about the Short Routes program and this partnership in particular. Also with Adventure Cycling, we have uh, Jen Hamelman, who is our director of routes. She's been with the organization um, for the better part of 25 years and began her career at Adventure Cycling as a cartographer. In 2020, she shifted her energies to managing the U.S. bicycle route system, and she now leads the routes team to produce the best bicycle travel routes available. Allison Burson is the National Greenway Director for the East Coast Greenway. Allison brings more than 15 years of experience making public spaces more accessible equitable and enjoyable for people. She oversees the Alliance's trail development projects and programs and leads the Greenway's eight person field staff team. Daniel Pascal is the Mid-Atlantic Manager for the East Coast Greenway. Daniel carries region wide responsibilities for all aspects of Greenway development, advocacy and state committee and volunteer engagement. He supports communities along the route in Pennsylvania Delaware and Maryland as they plan, build, and maintain sections of the Greenway. Yeah, so welcome everybody. Um, and uh, I'm going to pass it off to Allison to get us started. Awesome. I'm going to do screen share. So um, can people hear me? Please put in the chat if you are having trouble hearing me. I'm assuming people can hear me. I know I can speak softly. So I want to make sure and can people see the slides? Awesome. So I am also very excited to be here talking with everyone today and sharing with you about short routes along the East Coast Greenway um, and talking with you about why, why we've done this partnership. So today we will tell you about short routes along the East Coast Greenway. We will tell you some highlights of these four first short routes we've done. And so the purpose of this is to help you have inform more information about using these short routes and also to understand more about East Coast Greenway Alliance uh, as well as Venture Cycling Association. Uh, and I will start out so here are some of our presenters and Daniel um, is being an incredibly good sport um, joining us at the very last minute. He thought he was going to have jury duty today um, and he, he did serve but didn't need to show up. So I asked him could he join because he can really speak to some of the coming soon routes. Um, so really glad he's jumping in at the last minute with, with very little prep for this. Um, and let me talk a little bit about the East Coast Greenway Alliance and give some history. Uh, so the East Coast Greenway Alliance uh, sorry, the, the East Coast Greenway is a vision for 3,000 miles of trail connecting Maine to Florida. And the East Coast Greenway Alliance is the organization working to get this vision built. So at this point, about, uh, about a third of the Greenway is built, which means about a third of the route connecting Calais, Maine uh, to Key West, Florida, is uh, on a protected Greenway or side path. And that means about another two thirds of it is still in the process. And at East Coast Greenway Alliance, we are working on the advocacy, the planning, the design 
to get design and construction dollars to build out the rest of the Greenway. Um, and we're super excited to be working with Adventure Cycling now because our focus has so much been on vision for future infrastructure and getting that infrastructure built. And we haven't had as much experience yet with helping people use what is existing today. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Jen to talk a little bit about Adventure Cycling Association, which will explain why you know, we're so excited to be working together. Thanks, Allison. So Adventure Cycling is a almost 50 year old organization that is a, we're a national nonprofit supporting uh, the transformative activity of bicycle travel, whether it's right out your front door or what we're more known for our journey of journeys of epic proportions. Um, we have a variety of different programs where we offer guided tours, printed maps, um, and a whole host of extensive resources to help folks get started uh, with bicycle travel. Uh, part of our programming is that we shepherd a over 50,000 mile route network with those printed maps as well as digital navigation resources. And we have started turning also to um, grow our programs to be more inclusive uh, to folks with different abilities, backgrounds, resources, time. And the short routes program is, is a really great example of that shift in some energies. And uh, we'll be talking more about that throughout the, the time we're together today. But essentially, we do have a shared mission with the East Coast Greenway and the East Coast Greenway Alliance in uh, the desire to get folks out on bikes to explore and experience adventure, whatever that means to them. So back to you, Allison. Yes. Um... And one of the things in terms of that shared goal of getting more people outdoors at East Coast Green Alliance, we realize that there's sort of one third of our route that is currently protected, comfortable trail that we'd encourage people to use. And then we've provided some sort of point by point navigation to show how you could connect the rest on road. And some of that road is very low stress to make those trail connections. And some of it is not very low stress and is really high stress and maybe you might want to avoid it or it's not ideal for every person to walk their bike on today. Um, and we've been realizing as more and more people are interested in travel on foot and on bike, we've been realizing we need to share more resources and help people understand how and where on the East Coast Greenway it might be great to do an easily accessible overnight bike ride. Um, or multi-day bike ride. And I've known since I graduated from college in 2007, and I wanted to bike across the country, adventure cycling was my go-to for how am I gonna do this? Where would I get a map? Where's a good route to go? And what would I need to pack? What do I need to do to be prepared? Um, so I'm super excited that being able to work with adventure cycling now allows us to build on and like learn from all their tools and knowledge. They had a pre-existing partnership with Ride with GPS, which provides a really great platform for sharing multi-day rides where you can provide a lot of information that's super easily accessible. Um, so for us, it's just so incredible to not need to sort of recreate the wheel or try to create lots of new information, but to build on incredible resources and add some more detail about we know so much about this route along the east coast greenway and one other thing you can see from this map is for the most part adventure cycling's atlantic coast route in the east coast greenway for the most part they are sort of you could overlay them on each other it's the same route and there are spots where there's sort of multiple options to go and there are some spots where it's slightly different routes so just flagging that for people um, and when people ask about doing longer trips on the East Coast Greenway, I always, always suggest if somebody would like a paper map to have this additional navigational support to get the Atlantic Coast routes, because that's an amazing resource. Um, so I'll turn it back to you, Jen, and head to the next slide to talk a little bit about what is a short route, what makes a short route? Sure. So actually, if you want to stay on that slide for just a moment, Allison, um, I just want to echo some of the things that you said about how the East Coast Greenway and the Atlantic Coast route really mirror each other. Um, but each of these routes have, have been built on had been built on different philosophies. So the East Coast Greenway really is all about getting folks a safe passage on separated paths and trails, um, whereas adventure cycling's routing philosophy is more about 
directing cyclists to low traffic back roads. And when we can, we incorporate those paths and trails where it's feasible. And we've found that for our purposes, it's not always feasible. And um, so that being said, adventure cycling routes are also not the shortest routes or the most direct route between point A and point B. So um, while they mirror one another, we do take slightly different tacks on how that all comes together. So it's, it's something to consider when you know planning a big trip like this. Um, and this is what the Atlantic Coast Route was one of the very first epic routes that we uh, did um, at over 2,600 miles. At the time, it was probably a lot more comfortable on a lot more of those low traffic roads. But with the Atlantic Coast and the incredible growth that that corridor has um, experienced in the last 40 years, uh, definitely there are some places where the Atlantic Coast Route has to resort to being on some higher trafficked, more highway type roads. So just a little bit of a heads up there. Um, now you can go, can we go to the next slide, Allison? Thanks. So what are short routes and why would um, the, a partnership between East Coast Greenway Alliance and Adventure Cycling be a good idea. So short routes are um, a way for us to expand our library with some of those more bite-sized adventures. They typically range in distance from 50 to 200 miles, um, which would take a beginner anywhere from two to five days to ride. Now, that being said, some of these routes um, we have try to curate this library as we go along for routes that are beginner friendly as well as some more advanced routes as well. So that information is all included in route descriptions and they can be located anywhere in the US and Canada. Um, we started this program to help people have adventure more often in their lives, or at least that's one of the reasons why we're doing this program because we recognize that not everybody is up for an epic adventure due to a variety of reasons. And so a short route is a really great place to be able to take advantage of that long weekend or um, that federal holiday that falls somewhere in your vacation schedule. So um, we, the point, um, so we, we curate these routes from the general public. Anyone can submit a route, and I am going to advocate that folks um, take advantage of that opportunity to submit a short route, your favorite route. And um, But the advantage of partnering with someone with the, like the East Coast Greenway is that um, they're a trusted partner, and they know every inch of the route that they have submitted. They are the experts on those routes. Uh, routes that we get in from the general public, we will vet and we do, you know, study them and have some criteria that they need to meet. Um, but sort of routes like we're getting from the East Coast Greenway are sort of the gold standard of short routes because we they do have such great backing from the East Coast Greenway Alliance. Um, and as you can see here, from this slide, this is a, a snapshot of the route library that you can find in the Ride with GPS interface. Um, I think we have another, the next slide maybe is also of interest in this part of the conversation. Um, so this is the landing page for short routes at Ride with GPS. And so um, that route library is accessible from this page. There's also a route map view for folks that are a little more visual. You can see the routes as they're laid out across the country. Um, we have 18 routes right now, and we are we have the plan to have at least 40 routes by the end of the year. I'm quite confident we're going to reach that number. We'd love to have your short route be part of that library, so I'm just going to keep plugging that. This page farther down, you can't see it on here, but there is an, an opportunity for you to be able to submit your route to um, the library. So consider that. Was there anything else that I needed to hit there? I'm feeling like I might've missed something. I think we can, Daniel and I can start giving an overview okay. of right. some of the routes East Coast Greenway Alliance has started out sharing. Um, and Daniel, do you wanna talk again about why we're really excited to provide short routes that are you know, maybe train accessible and high population density accessible, and then I can talk about why 
we started with the first ones we did. Sure. Yeah. I mean, a big part of the Greenway, I mean, the core part of the Greenway is connecting people to places in the densest areas of the country. Uh, and that means that a lot of people will have access to you know, more paths that are off-road, all ages and all abilities in areas that have lots of destinations close together. And that means you can you know, make these trips, as we've heard, um, that can happen over the course of a weekend and you can you know, visit multiple towns and cities and suburbs. Um, and as those trails come together, we really want to highlight those, uh, show them to the public and because it's a lot to look at the whole map at one time. And so if we can curate some of these routes with support from uh, our, our partners and our, our members and, and just residents along the Greenway, um, that can really, you know, open up all these worlds that are, you know, right next door, literally to people where they're living right now. Uh, and a lot of those have that easy return and or going to the end by transit or returning by transit. So you don't have to worry about the logistics of a vehicle, whether a friend or a rental vehicle or you know, partner having to kind of set all that up. Um, so we really want to take advantage of that density and that access that um, these these corridors have along the Greenway. And the reason we started with the ones we did is not because they're the best or our favorite, um, but because I said to my team, you know, maybe I should be the one to do some of the beta testing to start this and you know, see, see, see how this works to adapt. We have a number, we have a library of suggested trip itineraries that are on our website now that's a write-up that gives you um, sort of text description of rides that a number of former board members, current volunteers, sort of many of our sort of longtime sort of partners um, who've sort of been supporting the development of the East Coast Greenway for the last 15, 20, 30 years have provided foundation for descriptions of really fabulous short, you know, a day or two or three routes near them. I started focusing on New England because that's where I live. I've been living in Massachusetts and I'm now living in Freeport, Maine. So I said, ah, these are all places along the Greenway that I know they're relatively comfortable because I've ridden them recently and really enjoyed riding them. And thus I'm really excited to be sharing them. Um, and I could talk in great detail about each of these, but I'm going to try to just talk about highlights, but a couple of things that just to sort of make sure everybody's watching and looking for um, safety first, very, very most important thing. As we were putting these rides into Ride with GPS, um, we flagged with, you see the sort of caution, hazard, triangle with exclamation point. The spots on the route where there might be a bridge crossing like onto the Cape where there's really narrow sidewalk, high winds, um, high traffic right next to you that are sort of where are the pinch points or the crossings or the spots that you want to use extreme caution and, you know, sort of looking in advance if you're someone newer to uh, overnight travel or traveling with somebody who's less comfortable, sort of check and research this in advance and then use use caution when traveling through it. So that's one consideration we included for all routes. Another thing, um, I personally am highly, highly food motivated. So I tried to include, and I know that my preferences for um, bagels and bakeries and gluten and ice cream and dairy it does not meet everybody's dietary preferences, but for the routes that you sort of see that I've had a hand in developing, if you are an ice cream or bagel person or um, a bakery person, I provided so many recommendations for that. We've also tried to note if there's bike shops, we recommend really bicycle friendly accommodations campgrounds, bicycle-friendly businesses. We try to note all of that for all of ours. We certainly, it, all these regions are densely populated enough that there, there's certainly more businesses and accommodations. So we're just trying to provide guidance of here's, look here, there's lodgings here. Um, so then to talk about each of these routes. So Boston to the Cape Cod Loop, I want to um, highlight to people through Riding the Cape is sort of well known. Cape Cod Rail Trail is great. It's sort of it's very known. It's very doable. It's a great one for somebody who is very new to riding. Um, for me personally, I really love some of the stretch um, just north of Providence, where you're on um, the Blackstone River Heritage Trail. I don't have the name exactly right, but where there's Slater's Mill and there's incredible history um, of sort of some of the early industrial history of the U.S. 
um, as well as, um, as I said before, I was gonna do a call out to Holliston, the Holliston Rail Trail and Upper Charles Trail, um, as well as Garden in the Woods, which is a super cool native plant garden in Framingham. There's a, there's a lot that I really, really enjoy seeing on the um, inland, not on the Cape part of that route. Um, so letting people know about that. Um, and then note that there's sort of ferry that people can take Providence to Boston and you wanna check those ferry times closely. Um, and then uh, one other consideration I was thinking about for all of the first routes that we're sharing today was ones that might be able to pair with either commuter rail and or Amtrak's down Easter line running from Boston up to Brunswick, Maine. So the next couple routes I'm talking about could all be done individually, or they could be done in some combination using um, Amtrak's down Easter line. Uh, so the border to Boston Trail, which is Boston to Newburyport, or really Boston to the New Hampshire border, this is a segment of the East Coast Greenway that it's incredibly exciting to see all of the communities, Boston to Newburyport and the New Hampshire border, all these Massachusetts communities working in really close partnership with each other to do trail development. And um, basically sort of from Boston up to the end of the Northern Strand Trail in Lynn, um, there's complete trail and then there's some pieces of trail um, the rest of the way. Um, and then really, really beautiful trail art in Newbury port um so make sure you know, that's a really really great great place to stop and look um then for uh portland to newbury port or newbury port to portland again can pair with amtrak um there's um in portsmouth uh there's if, if you want sort of historical there's strawberry bank which is a living museum that's just just off the route um so that's a really fun destination and then the other thing for this route uh, New Hampshire is doing really well on, they've bought 10 miles of rail corridor and they've got the first segment of it. They're basically done with construction. It's not completely finished, um, but so close for the stretch just south of Portsmouth. So this route, I love that it's almost already out of date because there's more trail. Um, so it's a huge highlight. Um, and then um, the final of our sort of initial routes, Portland to Brunswick, I did this one because I said, well, I want people, I'm in Freeport. I was like, well, there's such a great one near me. This one is almost entirely on road, but it's lower stress road, sort of if you're comfortable riding on the road. Um, and it lets you be along the coast um, in Casco Bay. So really beautiful water views. And there's some really lovely campgrounds along the way. So if people are looking for a camping trip, um, and another thing to keep in mind for all of these, and especially for the Cape and for uh, Maine, in the summer and peak season, things book up way, 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 way in advance. So these ones do need a little bit more planning for accommodations at some time of year, but there's also sometimes when there's cancellations. Um, so I, I you should admit to this, but I tend to, for overnight rides as well as longer rides, want to just sort of see the weather and plan um, pretty close up to it. Um, so that's some overview of some of these rides. And again, Brunswick is the northern terminus of the Down Easter Amtrak line. So from Brunswick, you could take train back to Boston. Um, so that's some notable pieces of these. Um, and then I'll turn it back to Jen to talk about the amazing resources Adventure Cycling has to help you with planning and preparation for a trip of any length. Okay, thanks, Allison. Yeah, we um, we have a whole extensive selection of blog posts uh, from experienced cyclists to provide inspiration and advice on, on taking trips. Um, we've got gear packing lists, how to get started, what kind of features to look for on a bike, a whole rich library of downloadable resources to help you plan your trip, whether on the East Coast Greenway or any, you know, a lot of different locations across the 
the country. Um, we have, as I said before, maps made specifically for cyclists that are, you know, include features that are important to cyclists, like bike shops and um, locations of grocery stores, et cetera. As well as we also offer a really nice curated selection of gear um, on our on our website as well. Um, I would say those are probably the the biggest highlights. And um, did I miss anything, Jess? I feel like I feel like those are those are the those are the biggies. But um, and it's growing all the time, right? Absolutely. <clears throat> we have planning guides. We have guides on what to do if a dog chases you. I mean, everything that <laughs> was experienced while traveling for bike by bike. We want to make sure that we're helping prepare people ahead of time, um, think about those things. And um, there's some chat about Amtrak in here. We also have a guide of how to take your bike on Amtrak that's um, pretty helpful. And so that's all I'll add there. Yeah, and the, the other thing that I want to say that I um, neglected to mention about our partnership with Ride With GPS is that one of the reasons why we have partnered with them to share these short routes is because using them as a partner um, makes these routes accessible. It's like a gateway into navigating these routes on a mobile device. Or if you're more tech savvy and comfortable with Garmin and dealing with GPX data, you can also download the routes as GPX data and put them into those devices. Um, based on the level of account that we have or that short routes is in, um, it actually even includes their premium feature of audio turn um, and notices. So that's definitely really a fabulous feature that you can um, take advantage of through that short route library and using these routes through that interface. And adding on for the Ride with GPS interface and sort of how Adventure Cycling has set up the short routes with them, I am completely not a map person. So though Adventure Cycling provides amazing maps, which are amazing navigation tools, for me, having the Ride with GPS route that shows sort of where the food is along the way um, and has the like, you know, caution pieces that you know, I have pop up on my device. For me, that makes it much more accessible than um, for people who are sort of better navigators than I am. Uh, the other thing I want to say on navigation devices is East Coast Greenway does have map.greenway.org, which is a planning tool. So you can look at our route, but it is not ideal for a navigation tool for multi days if you're doing a trip. And again, sort of that's where Ride with GPS is an incredible resource and why it's super exciting. Um, to be able to to be able to use that and provide that resource. So then um, the last thing before we turn it over to questions, um, Daniel can give a little bit of a preview of some of the additional routes he's um, working on um, and sort of we're, we're sort of heading southbound and we'll have team members in different regions. We'll work to add more in sort of all along the East Coast, along the East Coast Greenway. So Daniel, if you want to you know, share some highlights. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, we're looking at a, a number of different routes in the Mid-Atlantic. Uh, if people are familiar with some of the historic canal uh, state parks and towpaths, uh, these form really long distance continuous trails in uh, the Mid-Atlantic in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Uh, so the East Coast Greenway uh, utilizes some of those, those towpaths. Uh, we really want to highlight the, the towns along the way, um, the history, uh, some of the landmarks, uh, and then also the access. There's uh, really great connections to New Jersey Transit, Amtrak, uh, SEPTA Regional Rail, so you can easily get from sort of major hubs of Philly, New York, um, and in between, and and connect to these trails and to the parks that you might not think that New Jersey is as green as these photos, but all of it is um, it, very immersive um, and really beautiful and scenic, and it's very flat, which is also nice. Um, for, for longer distances. Uh, and that one, that first one, um, we have multiple ways of doing it. Um, one way we're showing is you can take a, a ride from Princeton, um, which is a beautiful town worth exploring. Obviously, there's the university, but there's lots of shops uh, and, and sites to see, historic sites. Uh, and then you can bike along the, the route down to Trenton, uh, and, and see some more history, um, more connect connections to other trails across the river into Pennsylvania. Uh, there's another canal trail down to Bristol, Pennsylvania, and you can either loop back or you can take transit. 
Um, there's a lot in there. Uh, so that one's coming uh, and is really exciting to, to, to work on with everyone. And we have a few more in the works. Uh, DC to Annapolis to Baltimore uh, is all along the East Coast Greenway. Uh, this this route is about 66% of, you know, two thirds uh, of which is trails. And there's a major connection that's happening. And folks in the area in Maryland might be familiar with it. The WBNA Rail Trail has a bridge over the Patuxent River that's under construction. It is moving forward again after being stalled for a little bit. So we're making this route uh, in anticipation of that new connection. Uh, that trail itself is about 13 miles of rail trail when it's all continuous with that new bridge. Uh, so we want to show that off. And again, there's uh, Mark uh, regional rail or regional trains, commuter trains that you can take um, between Baltimore and DC. So that's really helpful at the end of the trip or the beginning uh, to utilize. And then Delaware has some incredible trails uh, in Newcastle County up by uh, Wilmington. Um, Newcastle, the historic town as well, is connected to Wilmington along the Markell Trail. It's about seven miles of trail, but it's some of the most uh, impressive and scenic seven miles you can imagine. Uh, there's also the Northern Delaware Greenway that goes north of Wilmington. So we want to string those together and you know try to present a weekend trip or a day trip that people can do. Um, and then the New Haven to Providence. Uh, this is a, a really incredible. Wait, uh, I can I can talk okay, about this please. one. I can talk, I've been, I've been, <laughs> this one I'm so excited about. It. I've been working on it this week, um, and I have also written all of this one, um, but. Uh, it is another that is Amtrak at both ends, so it gives that as a resource. And East Coast Greenway Alliance did an amazing history and culture guide in print paper form five plus years ago um, that has so much um, information about this region. And I'm trying to figure out a way we can translate that into a short route as well as we're trying to figure out um, doing a reprint of that. And there's an online version of it, um, but that route is almost entirely on trail, a lot of soft surface trail, some paved trail, um, and just you know, really lovely. Um, so super excited. You know, so it's, it's taking a little longer to do it because we have so much information to add for that one. Um, so that's a preview of some of the ones we're excited to have coming soon. Um, and I guess uh, Jessica will turn it back to you to do Q&A. Absolutely. Um, thank you, everybody, for your awesome questions. Um, it's been very lively in the chat, which I love. I love that you guys are talking to each other in the chat. Um, so some of the questions uh, tend to be grouped around themes. And so I will do my best to kind of um, pull some of those together um, so that we're not repeating things. Um, so there were uh, specific questions around like, are we going to talk about lodging um, along each of these routes? Are we going to talk about parking? Is that noted? And so I thought maybe if you guys wanted to talk about points of interest in general and how those are um, uh, either developed or found along the route or anything like that. Yeah, so I'll just chime in for basic short route submissions. Um, we highly encourage submitters or route developers to include information like that. Um, and there isn't a requirement that there is a, an extensive array of it, but perhaps just suggestions of what the route developer has used themselves. So, um, and I would anticipate that uh, both Allison and Daniel have, um, with their greater knowledge of the East Coast Greenway routes, have more specific suggestions that they uh, may, make, may make on their routes. In a way, because we are in one of the most densely populated and developed regions in the U.S., there, um, it, for the most part, there's plenty of accommodations, there's plenty of food, there's I think the longest stretch without sort of water or amenities on all of the East Coast Greenway route might be a 60 mile stretch. So it's just compared to some of the considerations for cycling and parts of the um, West of the US, it's very different. So the most part then we don't feel that there's a, you know, there are plenty of resources available for people to find on their own. In each of these routes we have highlighted either, you know, for example, um, you know, Old Orchard Beach Wells main area has a lot of hotels. So sort of pick ones there. Um, or for the uh, Portland to 
campgrounds with me and I've noted a couple of campgrounds that are incredibly scenic um, and also sort of in those areas there are hotels um, and then noting sort of you know for that route where the rubber bagel locations are because those bagels are really great and sort of ice cream um, so but really trying to highlight the bicycle friendly businesses some of our favorites and in the spots where if there are slightly more limited resources for one reason or another highlighting that and then we certainly haven't called out all the bike shops, you know, so if we're going through the Boston area, there's a lot more bike shops than that, but sort of if there's something that's immediately trail side, um, then we might note that. Yeah, and I'd add to that, um, I saw in, in the chat, the, the need for low cost lo lodging options is really tough. So while we have lots of amenities along this densely, cord densely packed corridor, um, it might be tough sometimes to find, you know, a cheaper, hotel or stay overnight. And so I, I think I also saw warm showers as a, a resource that was mentioned. Um, if folks aren't familiar with that, that's really worth looking into a community of, of people that, you know, share um, their space as well as, you know, um, go and, and seek out trips where they can be hosted by others. Um, and and there's and there's lots of ways to to tap into some of those resources. I mean, whether it's reaching out to us or Adventure Cycling to learn more about a particular corridor that you're interested in, um, we're we're always interested in hearing what people are looking for. Um, you know, maybe what they're concerned about. So we we try to highlight those. Um, you know, within reason. There's there's so many things you could highlight on a trail uh, and a route. Uh, obviously, safety is important, and amenities are really important. Transit access. Um, I should mention too, um, on Facebook, we have an East Coast Greenway Explorers, which is more of a more of a forum for kind of crowdsourcing a lot of um, other people's trips. People have blogged about lots of this route, um, video blogs, so you can see, you know, videos of people's trips, uh, what they highlighted, you know, what might be more concerning. So it's, it's really helpful just to kind of explore out there and, and we can help with that. Wonderful. Awesome. Um, another sort of general topic that keeps coming up in the chat has to do around um, sort of understanding how much of um, these East Coast Greenway short routes are on road versus paths versus rail trails versus sort of how do you know um, in the planning process what you're on? And I think we can also extrapolate that question out um, secondarily into all of our short routes. So for these routes in the descriptions, I tried to provide a sense of, is this mostly on road? Is it mostly on trail? Is it a combination? Um, if you zoom in on the map, looking at the routes, you, you can see what it's on. Um, and then another tool, if you want to use it, map.greenway.org, again, is a planning tool that we show what is a trail, what is road, what is on road, and we also show if it's paved or unpaved trail. Again, in the descriptions, I made a note of, you know, if trail was paved or unpaved, and then sort of a note given the weather we've had the last sort of year with so much rain in the northeast um, that there's a lot of trail that even where the trail managers are doing an incredible job keeping up with maintenance there's just a lot more washout and we try to note that as well as sort of noted if there's any area of concern we know about sort of right on the route itself add to the the base maps are really helpful on the ride with gps uh, there's one that's just your standard google map um, and even in that there's a settings drop down uh, where you can look at checking on bike bike paths uh, and that will give you a sense of the bike paths that connect to and from the route as well as along it um, there's an open street map cycle map and one of the drop downs uh, that has our you know long distance routes not just of the east coast greenway but you know adventure cycling routes us bike routes lots of others uh, for reference so there's a lot of kind of ways you can you know add more context to your planning um, and maybe one of the best is google street view if you're not familiar with that you take the little yellow guy there's a little icon in the google map and you can drop it literally on the route and give you a, you know a street level view uh, of what it looks like on the ground and that's helpful especially for comparing you know, on-road riding conditions, there's a vast variety, some that are extremely stressful and some that are actually really pleasant. Um, and that's a helpful tool just to get a better sense of that kind of variety. 
And um, on the more broad short routes library, I can say that Rideway GPS has been um, has recently rolled out a feature that tries to determine whether the surface of the roadway is paved or not paved. Um, it's uh, fairly reliable, not 100% reliable, and uh, we do try to manually go in and um, you, we can change that on the on the back end how that um, is viewed. And uh, I will also say that as the library grows, we are looking at different ways to add um, descriptions or groupings so that you can uh, ascertain whether a route is mostly on road or mostly on trail. Right now, with there only being you know eighteen routes in the library, it hasn't been a huge need, but we do see as the library grows that that will be a really important feature for people to be able to tell um, easily. So we are looking at how to do that. Awesome. That sounds like it'll be a great feature. Um, James has a question. Um, how, like, has a, has a question around how personal safety is considered uh, in these routes through urban areas? And this is one that, um... Daniel and I talked a lot about as we were sort of planning and working on these routes, knowing that what different people perceive as safety and comfort is just so varied. But when I was developing each of the routes I was working on, I sort of said to myself, what can I do to make it as clear as possible where I'd really recommend being so that it's sort of a very clear route, you know, some of the train stations, perhaps they're sort of one way to connect to the greenway that's a lot easier. So I, for the start and end points, I chose for these short routes, if there's a connection to a train station where I think that there's one way that is a much more comfortable connection, both because of traffic, but because of sort of the various neighborhoods um, and different things you might go through. I was really attentive to detail on that because for me, that provides a lot of additional comfort. Daniel, for the route, he, the route on the um, DNL trail that he talked about, he and I looked a bunch at sort of, there's some places where if, to get to a safer crossing, it's a, if you look on the map, it's sort of, well, why are you going up over and around? Um, so again, sort of for the East Coast Greenway short routes, if, if, if you see on any of them, something where you say why is there that squiggle why are they doing it that way quite often it's because of the consideration around we want to avoid a particular highway underpass um or we want to avoid you know something that isn't well lit at night something like that or we just want a safer crossing um daniel do you have more yeah yeah no i, I appreciate this question i think it's one of my favorite things about this work is that it invites people to explore areas that they've never been uh, and to meet people they've never met before. And the the vast majority of stories and blogs and, you know, when people ride a long distance, especially on the Greenway, but also, you know, cross country on other adventure cycling routes, the vast majority are just gushing about how kind people are and how amazing it is to, you know, kind of enter into different spaces and learn about different cultures and that could be in urban areas, it could be in rural areas, it could be in suburban areas. So I just want to emphasize if if you're presenting kindness out, you know, to people, you know, you might not always get it in return. Um, but I, I think it's really important, to, you know, to think about how you're a guest in, in a new space and, and how how to act respectfully, um, because that, you know, at the end of the day, that's the base uh, we can we can provide each other the kind of the golden rule. Um, and that really goes a long way. Uh, and I know perception can be really tough. And there are, you know, areas where there is crime that happens. Um, but that doesn't mean that every single, you know, space is going to be a nightmare scenario from like the local news. So I just want to make sure that everyone's kind of thinking openly about this. And um, and actually, a lot of our rides, you know, we we really encourage people to, you know, look around, stop into a shop, talk to a business owner and get to know people because you'll you'll see that, you know, everyone has so much in common in that way. Um, and our work also relates to activating these trails and these spaces so that they feel safer when you have more activities, when you have more people that feel a sense of ownership over it. So there's a there's a lot to that question. And, I, you know, I could go on for a lot longer, so I'll stop there, but just encourage that exploration. 
And I will just really quickly reiterate everything or, you know, a plus one to everything Daniel said. We have folks come through the Missoula office every summer, and I like to ask them, you know, what are your highlights of your trip? And I would say at least nine times out of 10 in the top three, people say their experience of the people they've met along the routes. And I can echo that with my own experience when I did a trip in 2017. Um, I walked away with the um, really felt knowledge that most people, most of the time, want to be, quote, good. They want to do the right thing. They want to they want to help. And so um, that's really a great uh, frame of reference or perspective to take with you on uh, one of these trips. Great. Um, thank you both. Um, I would like to say that I definitely took that question to be more about um, like, uh, how do I navigate these urban areas because they have more density, more um, cars, trickier, um, often like more traffic, more um, like, but often also more sidewalks and just things to take into consideration. Um, so there's also seems to be a theme of unsure of what exactly is free in this program and what needs to be paid for. And so just curious if you guys could um, elaborate on that. I will happily take the lead on that. So short routes are all 100% free. Um, you do not have to have a paid account with Ride With GPS to access, to download, um, and to use that um, voice navigation feature uh, that they offer. That is all included in the experience of it. So, um, awesome. Um, okay, so um, let's see. Um, uh, I'll, I'll just answer a few really easy ones. Yes, these routes are available to download from Ride With GPS. Um, like Jen said, they are free. Um, yes, we are going to be sharing this presentation out. This is being recorded right now. We will put it on our YouTube channel and we will also send out a follow-up email to all, um, uh, people who registered for the event, as well as people that filled out the interest form so that you receive the recording and you can share it, you can go watch it on YouTube. Um, that will happen on Monday. Um, let's see. So I think that covers, oh, we had a really, <laughs> what I thought was a really fun question um, that we can kind of maybe wrap up with. Um, just what is the closest point on these routes to Canada? It's a little ways away, but Brunswick, Maine, um, and the East Coast Greenway does, that route begins in Calais. Um, so that is right at the Canadian border. Um, and then for the uh, Atlantic Coast Adventure Cycling Route that starts sort of uh, Far Harbor. So that's slightly farther than Cats to the Canadian border. Wonderful. Well, um, I just want to thank everybody for coming, um, for participating, and um, for our presenters today. You did a lovely job. Thank you, Daniel, for joining sort of last minute. Um, anything I missed or last uh, words that you guys want to share? I would love to um, have a lot of this continue forward, of course. We have many more routes we want to show off. Uh, and I know there's so many routes that we have no idea about and that you all out there know about, uh, especially ones that you know go off the East Coast Greenway. I think I saw some about the Eastern Shore in Maryland. I know there's other parts that are beautiful and scenic. Um, and to some of the other comments too, we are working with partners to try to create a network, not just one trail that, you know, we really care about that connectivity um, the same way you would a transit network. You don't want just one route. You want to be able to transfer and, you know, go multiple places. So really encourage people to get involved, go to 
both our organization's websites and figure out how you can, you know, connect with us locally in your region. Uh, and that's that's just a great way to start. And, and there's lots of local partners who are doing such great work uh, improving these routes and improving connectivity and the safety along them. So, yes, thank you so much for the enthusiasm. And I'll, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, and as in closing, I just want to one more time, maybe it's more than that, uh, to really thank you for all being here and your interest in the East Coast Greenway routes in particular, and to um, pitch submitting your own short route, or if you are a part of a, of a bike club that has routes that might be appropriate for this, please have, I mean, organizations are welcome to submit short routes as well. We love to be able to um, highlight uh, the work of uh, other organizations across the country doing this kind of um, support. So, Absolutely. And I put that submission link as well as a bunch of other helpful links in the chat. Um, and I hope you utilize them. Um, reach out and uh, we'll just keep seeing this route network and these partnerships grow. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Great weekend. Thanks. Thanks.